Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Goodbye, David. I've got to pick up a few things and park the car. Meet you in front of the drugstore. Right, I'll be there. Some job parking this car. Eastbrook gets so crowded during shopping hours. Claudia, watch where you're driving. I'm watching. You're not. You're looking off the side. I'm looking for a place to park the car. Oh, there's someone pulling out. No, she's pulling in. Honestly, the way some women park, you don't know which direction they're going in. Part calling the kettle black. Oh, there's a space. And a fire hydrant. I think you really enjoy watching me struggle against the odds of traffic. There's a parking lot down on the other side of the hardware store on Main Street. To pay 25 cents, you think I'm crazy? No, mercenary. 25 cents to park in a small town. I'll find a space if I Mrs. Have... Norton, you're bottling up traffic crawling along like this. It's too bad, Mrs. Brown. I'm looking for a place to park my car. Honestly, so many cars shouldn't be allowed. There aren't half enough to go around as it is. Where are you going to now? <gasps> that woman! Why didn't she put her hand out? She did. I didn't see it. You weren't looking. Claudia, for heaven's sakes, park the car and let's get out. I'm doing my best, Mom. Turn around now. You turns are not allowed. I'm not going to turn around in the middle of the street. I'm going to turn around in that second-hand car lot. I just drive in, drive out, be going in the opposite direction. Say, look at all those cars on sale. What prices. They get them, too. Look at that old station wagon, $1,700. Looks like an antique. And that's for the proof of it. Of what? The cars are at a premium these days. Ah, hello there, lady. Oh, dear. Um, hello. Ah, you can pull up here. Oh, but I don't want to. Oh, that's all right. You won't clutter up the driveway. I warned you to stay out on the street where you belong. Hmm, nice little job, this here car. We like it. Runs well? Beautifully, yes. Hmm, kept up pretty good, too. It just came out of the garage completely overhauled. Claudia. I'm telling him about the car. He's interested. Yep. Nice looking job. Give you ten fifty for it. Ten fifty what? One thousand fifty nice new brand green bills. For a car that's been in an accident, Mama, imagine. Well, you wouldn't get a better place for price for it any place. I haven't been any place else. Smart little lady. You're right when you come to smiling Gus for the fairest deal. We buy at the highest prices and sell at the lowest prices. So that's not a very good way to do business. Well, you're right, lady. But that's smiling Gus for you. Always thinking of the other fellow. So I offer right this minute in cash, ten fifty. Oh, but I wouldn't dream. You see, I don't really want to sell this car at all. Ah uh-huh. So that's the way you deal your cards, eh? Hey, lady. All right. I'll raise my ante. Your ante. What's she got to do with my car? It's just an expression, lady. Oh, Poker. Look. See. I'll raise my ante and offer you eleven seventy-five. One thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. And no cents. That's a lot of money. You said I'm out for lady. It's a nice heaping sum of money. Come along, Claudia. You know you're just talking. You're not the least bit interested in selling this car. Is this how you people do business? Buy a car from one person, sell it to another. What's so extraordinary about that? Well, nothing except I just never sold a car I own. This is the first car you ever owned. That's true. Well, what do you say, lady? I got an awful lot of business to transact today. What do you say? Eleven seventy-five smackaroos. Cash on the spot. No, I'm sorry. My husband, he, he wouldn't like it. Twelve fifty. No. No, it's not the money he wouldn't like, but... Uh... Oh, making a business deal with a female is a losing proposition. You're willing to spend thousands of dollars for a mean coat. But when it comes to spending 25 cents, you start feeling bad. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you twelve fifty, Not a cent, not a penny, not a copper coin more. Claudia, for heaven's sakes, David will be looking for us. He'll find it. Well, what do you say? Well, I say, Mr. Gus, that I'm not really interested in $1,250. Strange as it may seem. 
Oh, you sure drive a hard bargain, lady. But seeing I've got a particular market for this type vehicle, I'm willing to play a game. Offer you 13.60. Oh, no, you see, I didn't really drive in here to... Uh, that's what they all say. That's what they all say. $1,400. I'm awfully sorry if you seem to have gotten the impression that I'm anxious to sell. I only drove in here to drive in here. And then when you started talking, I... I got interested, but honestly, I... Fourteen hundred dollars ain't enough, all right. Fifteen hundred dollars. Not a penny more. Claudia, I'm dizzy. Fifteen hundred dollars? That's an awful lot of money all at once. Well, you're telling me. It ain't often that Smiling Gus gets himself hooked in on a deal of this kind. But fifteen hundred dollars cash on the spot. Fifteen hundred dollars cash on the spot. We could buy a whole flock of cows, Mama. I got an idea that you want to think it over. Am I right? Well, I, I... I I know that most of you ladies is very leery about making a business arrangement without the approval of your husbands. Okay? Tell you what I'm going to do. You just leave this here car here, park it right here. You mean I can park it right here? Right. Just leave it right here and go about your business. Go buy your business. Go buy your groceries and your meat and your hardware. Go to the dime store. Call up your husband if you like. When your mind's made up, you just say to Smiling Gus, Okay, it's a deal. My $1,500 cash on the spot, if you please. And the whole affair's closed. So park the car here meantime. You mean I can park the car here for nothing? Sure, that's what I said. And Smiling Gus never goes back on his work. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, Mr. Gus. Did you hear him, Mama? I heard. Well... Come on. And you're under no obligations, lady. No obligations whatsoever. But believe me, you'll have no better offer from here to California and back. Oh, I'm not looking for a better offer, Mr. Gus. Really, I'm not. Good. We'll be back in a few minutes. Take your time, and if I ain't here, ask for Mac. He takes over when I'm out to lunch. We will. Aren't you ashamed? Ashamed? Why? Leading that poor man on like that? I didn't lead him on. He led himself on. <laughs> Claudia. That sounds like David. David, we're just going down to the grocery store. We'll be right back. All right, I'll wait for you, darling. By the second-hand car lot. I don't think we'll be more than about five minutes, darling. All right, take your time. Say, get me some tobacco, will you? Hey. Isn't a thing in the world to hurry for. Hey, you're looking for a car, friend? Uh, what's that? Uh, right along here. <laughs> We have the best models you can buy at the lowest prices. I'm a Scotchman, friend, and I yet I believe that every one of these cars here is a real bargain. <laughs> I'm practically giving them away. You're giving them away, huh? Sure. Uh, second-hand cars are just being given away these days. I, <laughs> like bingo. You have the looks of a man who don't believe me. Yeah. Now, for instance, this here car being given away for a mere song. A song, huh? It yeah. hasn't been in the lot here for ten minutes. Smiling Gus just bought it. Uh, which one and how much? Just for the fun of it. Uh, this year, black convertible with the red leather seats and the white wall tires. <laughs> mm-hmm, that uh, black convertible. Uh-huh. Huh? Come on over here and have a good look. You know, it's um, it's funny. I I have a car just like it. Oh, we bought it, Gus. He did uh, just now off a little old lady and her mother. Uh, what? In perfect condition it is. Just been overhauled at our expense. The little lady says it drives like a baby carriage. Oh, brand new life. Um, did you say you bought this car? Oh, aye, we don't steal the mister. No, I'll make you a fine offer. Cheap as a giveaway. $2,600. $2,600? I'm, I'm dreaming. It's that uh, cheap. It seems like a dream, I know. But look, uh, wait just a minute. Now, I, uh... I don't have to buy this car. It's, and it's... you don't have to be. You can't resist that $2,600. <laughs> it's fantastic. I, I... Too much money? All right. All right. To show you what kind of people we are, I'll give it to you for 2400 And that's really given. As a Scotchman, I should know. Well, just keep your kilt on a minute. You can't sell me this car. Not for $2,400? Well, how about $2,200? Not for any price. I'm I'm trying to ah, tell you that... Ah, tough one, are you? Yep. You know, I'd rather do business with the ladies any day. Much easier. Men always feel that they have to drive a sharper bargain. <laughs> All right. 2100 
That's saving you $500. Look, I'm trying to tell you that this is my car. Ah, I'm glad you see it. For $2,100, it is yours. And it's a bargain, too. But I don't have to pay you. I can prove that. If, if you'll only let me talk. Now, now look. $2,100 is still too much, all right? Now, wait a minute. Because it's the way Smell and Gus likes to do business. Yes, I You can have it for 2000 flat. Not yeah. a cent more, not a penny less. Oh, I give up. Oh, 2000 eh? Well, that's pretty cheap under any other circumstances. Ah, I may admit it. Look, a, a radio, a heater. Yes, I know all about its extras and accessories, thank you. Hey, <laughs> just feel as if they were your own, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do, remarkably so. <laughs> David? David, I'm back. Well, it's a good thing. Oh, I see you found the car. Oh, uh, you interested in buying it too, lady? In buying it? Uh, David, I... Oh, you know this gentleman? Kind of, yes. Claudia, before you say another word, what have you told these people about the car? Ma'am, he's driven me down to $2,000. Driven you down? You offered me more, and it's yours. Oh, it's a bonny car, lassie. He's offered you $2,000 for this car? I need saving $600 in it. I should sell it for no less than $2,600. Darling, please, please tell me, what have you done? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Eh, You can have it for $2,100, ma'am. You can save 500 No, no, thank you very much. We've, uh, we've made enough money on this car as it is. What? I could sell it to Gus for 1500 And, and David, you can buy it for 2000 thereby saving, um, 600 600 you save and 1500 I make is, uh, $2,100 profit. And we still have the car. And it didn't cost me one penny to park. Eh, uh, what's she talking about, laddie? Uh, it's a good day's work, darling, so let's go home. Changing times have brought new ways of entertaining. Women don't attempt to cook and bake and fuss about as they used to. They put plenty of coke on ice when they expect guests over for the evening and often let it go at that. For delicious ice-cold Coca-Cola appeals to old and young alike. And the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola is always welcome. Mr. King, tell me, does your wife get herself into such situations merely trying to park the car? (laughs) Well, not exactly this one that Claudia's got herself into. But yes, she manages to get herself into scrapes, too. Why don't they just pay 25 cents and get it over with? Ask me what I can answer, Mrs. Brown. It's the strangest thing about money. Claudia just hates to part with it. When it's for parking the car... But let her loose in a cut-rate drugstore, she's not nearly so inhibited. When is that supposed to happen? Why, I think that'll be happening tomorrow. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Don't look so glum, Mrs. Brown. All's well that ends well. So they say, but I'm not quite sure. See you then, Mr. King. Until tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.